Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with today's coronavirus update. Uh, I am sitting finally back at home. It is uh, Friday, uh, April 24th today. I'm going to try filming this with the webcam today, see how the quality is. Um, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we'll uh, quickly start with the numbers and I'll tell you a little bit about my whole New York trip adventure. Um, 2.8 million cases worldwide, 196,000 deaths worldwide, 781,000 recoveries. Here in the U.S., we're at 910,000 confirmed cases, 51,000 deaths. Luckily, we're up to seven, or rather 99,000, almost 100,000 people have recovered. Here locally in North Carolina, we're up to 8,052 cases, and we've had 269 Yes. Now, for those of you that may be new to the video, um, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Galvin. I'm board certified in emergency medicine um, and obesity medicine. I run a uh, uh, longevity, high performance medical precision medicine clinic in North Carolina, but I also uh, am an actively working emergency physician as well. And I do a daily uh, rundown of what's going on. Now, if you've been with us, you, you may realize that I just got back from New York City. I had a uh, uh, mother and father-in-law who are in their late 70s who really have been here since uh, since January sometime and we're supposed to go back to New York City where they live in the Bronx on the 1st of March. We wouldn't let them go and it's been a battle. They, they have things they need to get done in New York, they think. Um, they are very, very stubborn, we're stubborn and finally it came to a head where they were going to get on a train and go and I didn't think that was safe. So I ended up driving them up there Wednesday night, we drove through the night, got to New York yesterday morning, loaded up their apartment with food and everything we had brought with us, got them settled, and then I drove back overnight last night and got back to North Carolina at like 6 in the morning. So, interesting trip. I, I posted a little bit about it yesterday. Um, New York is a place that we, we go to all the time. Uh, my wife uh, grew up, uh, at least from age 16 on, after moving from the Dominican Republic, grew up in the Bronx in the same apartment. And that's a very vibrant, active place. Lots of music, lots of people around, crazy, crazy, and it's very, very strange right now because it's very sedate. Not very many people around, very little traffic, didn't see much uh, activity, didn't see a lot of kids running around. People were wearing masks for the most part. The parks were all empty, although I did see something which was un unusual. There was actually uh, across from Yankee Stadium, there's a couple baseball fields, and, it, and there was a softball game going on which was weird. It was the only group of people I saw the whole time in New York. Driving here and back, saw you know a few cars on the road, a fair number of trucks, but just very, very strange. Not what you'd normally expect. And it's just another thing, another piece of how this virus has sort of changed our daily lives. In terms of what we're gonna talk about today, uh, first off, I, I think, well, I'm gonna tell you something that I probably would guess that for the most part, you know not to do, but no drinking or injecting disinfectant is not a good idea, and it's not gonna cure the coronavirus, but it may make you sick. So please don't do that. Don't ingest bleach, don't ingest rubbing alcohol. Remember, if you wanna kill the virus on your skin, what's gonna work? Soap and water. That's all you need to use. Soap disrupts the lipid membrane of the virus and destroys it. You don't need to use any special antibacterial soap. You don't need to use alcohol. You know, if, uh, if you're going to use hand sanitizer, you want to have it to be 70% alcohol, but that's going to be plenty to kill the virus. We've talked a little bit about hydroxychloroquine quite a bit over the, over the weeks, and one of the things I've been looking for is this big study they've been doing in New York City. 22 hospitals, they have been looking at the use of hydroxychloroquine in the hospitals and seeing if it, if it has an effect on fatality rates. And the preliminary data was supposed to be released today. And what we've seen so far of it, it does not seem to show that hydroxychloroquine is causing any significant improvement in these folks. The other thing is the FDA just came out with a pretty strong warning against people using it as an outpatient. It's being used, you know, touted as a cure for the virus and people are being prescribed as an outpatient along with azithromycin. And it does have a black box warning for QT prolongation. And of many of the studies that we're seeing, some of them have actually been stopped, stopped early because of excessive deaths related to cardiac arrhythmia. So I think that the jury is still out on hydroxychloroquine, whether it may have an effect. We know that, and you know, we've talked about, you know, I have that supplement handout that many of you guys have asked for and received. And if you, if you, it's something that you're interested in, 
just uh, send an email to info at vitalitymwi.com or go to our website or go to our YouTube channel or, or post it here and I'll send you a copy. But one of the things we know is that zinc we think is a pretty potent disruptor of replicase, which is this enzyme that the virus uses to make more copies of itself. And zinc inhibits it. Zinc doesn't get into the cells very well, so you need a, a ionophore or something to carry it into the cell. Uh, quercetin is a really good one, but it turns out that hydroxychloroquine acts as ionophore as well. Maybe that has some, may have some effect in the virus. But again, jury's still out. It's certainly not a miracle cure, and we're going to be looking at these studies when they become available. Remember, the majority of these things are preliminary studies. They haven't been peer-reviewed, and so they're much lower quality than what we would typically expect to receive from a study. Uh, the other thing um, is the reopening question and antibody testing and everything else. So I mentioned yesterday that New York City did some antibody testing randomly through, or New York State did 3,300 tests throughout the, the, the state. And they found out that 14% of New York State residents had antibodies against the virus and 20% of the people in New York City. And that's potentially very good news because that would indicate that a lot of people are developing the virus and are not getting sick from it and we're that much closer to herd immunity. But I do think that, again, preliminary results, and there are some real concerns about the antibody tests because the FDA has given authorization for about 90 different companies to provide antibody tests. And the problem is that none of them have really been tested and we don't know how good they are. And in particular, the ones that use a little finger prick are probably the most suspect. And some of the ones that are, um, the, are being used have very, very high false positive rates, meaning they say everybody's positive when they're not. And then also we're seeing um, that there have a lot of false negative rates as well, meaning that you may have antibodies and don't actually show up. So until we get a good handle on these tests and you know everybody's selling them, I mean like I've, I've been approached by several different people I know that are actually in the, are starting to try to sell these tests to hospitals and things and none of them are in the medical field. And they're basically going on the manufacturer's uh, recommendation and there's the, oh, the brochure says it's 97% uh, sensitive. Well, we don't know that. So we've got to look at these numbers with a little bit of a grain of salt, but I'm cautiously optimistic. We cannot reopen until we have real data. So states that are just saying, oh, it's open, you know, they're flipping a coin. They're, they're putting their turban on, they're looking through the crystal ball, but we are guessing. And so if this has a potential to kill people, I would say let's get quickly get testing done so we know what the prevalence is so that we can do this safely. And then let's open up just as quickly as we can, but do it in a way that protects lives. Um, I'm going to stop there. Um, I'm, I'm still recovering from my whirlwind trip here. Um, we'll be back um, the weekend. I'm going to start filming these Q&A things. Remember, please go to our, our YouTube page and subscribe and hit the bell. We are going to be posting a lot of individual questions and answers there, plus a bunch of wellness content and, and other things. Please follow us here on Facebook uh, and like the page. If you uh, find this value, please share it with your friends. As I always say, wash your hands, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of those around you, take a deep breath. Everything's going to be fine. We are going to get through this. And you know, maybe there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. We're starting to see get some real data. And once we have real data, that's going to allow us to move forward in a way that's safe and protects us all. Have a great night.